Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The incredible closest servant and friend of Elizabeth I. Now, Elizabeth I is regarded as one of the greatest monarchs that England has ever had. During her time on the throne, she defeated the Spanish Armada and also repelled threats from Mary, Queen of Scots, which resulted in the Scottish monarch's execution at Fotheringhay Castle. She was a queen who surrounded herself with key advisers and prominent courtiers, such as Sir Francis Walsingham, her spy master, and the queen's advisers were considered some of the best in Europe. But there was one woman who was a personal attendant of the queen, who remarkably, instead of just being a lady-in-waiting, eventually became the chief gentlewoman of the queen's most honourable privy chamber, being the head of her bedchamber and this inner sanctum of royalty. She even became the keeper of Her Majesty's Jewels. But who was Blanche Parry? Now, Blanche Parry was born around 1507 and was the daughter of Henry Miles, who was the, sh the Sheriff of Herefordshire. Her mother was Alice Melbourne and her ancestors were landowners, but she was brought up in Wales and learned Welsh and English. There were links to the Lollards and that some family members may have been linked to the rebellious people, but she wasn't the most noble, but she became incredibly important inside the court of Elizabeth I. She came to the royal court with her aunt, who was Blanche Melbourne, or Lady Herbert of Troy. She was in charge of bringing up Elizabeth I, Edward VI, and also Princess Mary. Blanche Parry was helpful in raising the royal children, and uh, from around 25 years of age until her death, she helped to raise and serve Queen Elizabeth I. She was a constant by the side of Elizabeth during her younger years, and also through turbulent times. She helped rock her cradle, but also helped her later make very important decisions. The early years for Elizabeth I were very turbulent. For example, she lost her mother, Anne Boleyn, who was executed within the walls of the Tower of London. Elizabeth's mother had been found guilty of treason, adultery and incest against Henry VIII, Elizabeth's father. The Tower of London for Queen Elizabeth I always symbolised her mother's brutal execution and killing, and today she is considered a victim. During the reign of Queen Mary I, her half-sister, Elizabeth a princess, was taken to the Tower of London and was held under close watch, accused of possibly being involved in plots against Mary. This was an incredibly tough time for Elizabeth, and she refused to be taken into the Tower via Traitor's Gate, and it was said that she refused to enter the royal fortress and prison. But it was inside the Tower of London, where Blanche Parry continued to attend on the princess in her hardest times. She was given a wage inside of the household of around 100 shillings, and was given further money to help pay for horses. Following the death of Queen Mary I, Elizabeth came onto the throne. This was where Blanche Parry's loyalty and respect she had for the princess really helped the Queen. When Elizabeth became Queen, Blanche was appointed to be Chief Gentlewoman of the Privy Chamber. This meant that she controlled the access that anyone had to the Queen, meaning that anyone who requested a private meeting with her had to go through Blanche, and she was in charge of the Queen's wardrobe. Her ladies and staff prepared her bedchamber, dressed the Queen and even helped the Queen with her bowel movements and going to the toilet. Despite this, it was seen as a very privileged position, and Blanche must have been considered one of the favourite attendants of the Queen. She was certainly given a very powerful position. Because of this, she was also placed in charge of the Queen's jewels and her crown from before she came onto the throne onwards. And she was also given control of the Great Seal of England, this was a position with huge responsibility, and Blanche Parry was also in control of the Queen's personal papers, clothes, furs, books and other luxuries, which would be given to her. In response for her work and loyalty, the Queen awarded her generous gifts of money and land. She was also seen as a conduit to the Queen, and she would speak to people on their behalf. For example, during the Northern Rebellion, she received a number of parliamentary bills from the Queen, and also spoke on behalf of the Queen to representatives. She also wrote letters for her, and supervised other things, including the Queen's pet ferret. Because of this, she was involved heavily at the centre of court life, and many people reached out to her to help their own plight and status at court. 
her position was unshakable, and she was friends with her cousin, Sir William Cecil, the Queen's chief advisor, and she worked together with him. She was even given a large amount of land in Herefordshire, Yorkshire and Wales from the Queen, as well as some of the most lavish clothing worn in the English court. In response, Blanche gave Elizabeth silver and jewellery as well as ornaments, and on New Year's Day 1572, she gave the Queen a flower of gold enamelled with rubies and diamonds, and then a year later, she gave the Queen a jewel of mother of pearl, which must have cost her a fortune. These wealthy gifts that Blanche Parry was able to give to the Queen showed how well off she must have been. Following 1587, she passed the responsibility for the Queen's jewels to Mary Radcliffe, and before this, she made an inventory of them which said that 628 pieces had been passed to Radcliffe and her custody. It was William Cecil who supervised her wills, and he wrote handwritten notes to her about this, showing how close she was with him. This also shows the intimate detail of Elizabeth I's inner court and closest friends and advisers, how they seemingly got along with each other. However, on the 12th of February 1590, at around the age of 82, Blanche Parry died. This was a huge thing for the Tudor period, somebody getting into their 80s, as healthcare was poor and disease were common around society, especially deadly ones such as smallpox. To cement her status and importance, she was buried in St Margaret's Church in Westminster, with the rank of Baroness, and the Queen paid for all of her funeral and the expenses that came with it. Monuments were dedicated to her, and it was reported of her death that, on Thursday last, Mrs Blanche Parry departed, blind she was on earth, but I hope the joys in heaven she shall see. Her monument inside of the church in Westminster states, here under is entombed Blanche Parry, daughter of Henry Parry of New Court in the country of Hereford, Esquire, gentlewoman of Queen Elizabeth's most honourable bedchamber and keeper of her jewels, whose she faithfully served her highness from birth, beneficial to her kinfolk and countrymen, charitable to the poor, in so much that she gave to the poor of Bacton and Newton in Herefordshire seven score buckles of wheat and rye yearly, with divers sums of money to Westminster and other places for good uses. She died a maid in the 82nd year of her age, the 12th of February. Interestingly, a piece of cloth known as the Bacton Altar Cloth survives inside of the church in Herefordshire. It's believed that this is a dress belonging to Queen Elizabeth I and was given to Bacton by Blanche Parry, her longest serving courtier. The altar cloth survived centuries and today is the only known piece of clothing left attributed to the Queen. But Blanche Parry, was an incredibly loyal lady who spent her whole life as an attendant to Queen Elizabeth I. She helped raise her as a child and devoted her life to the princess, and then Queen, and remained with her through thick and thin. This loyalty throughout the Tudor period was rare, as many sought advancement, but she was given a huge responsibility in court being in charge of her privy chamber, and also the keeper of jewels. Her life was truly remarkable. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.